Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday, October 3rd, 2024, about 9.48 a.m. California time here. <clears throat> 2.0, the latest quake across the area of uh, Oklahoma, it looks like. Let's go ahead and chat about uh, some space weather activity. Goodness, had a uh, super strong flare this morning. In fact, the strongest flare of this solar cycle, an X9.0. This marks the second X flare here in the last couple days. Uh, the previous X flare, an X7.15, which was the uh, third largest solar flare this cycle. But uh, this one right here pretty much blew out uh, the previous record for this solar cycle. Now, that's not the strongest flares that we can see out here. Actually, they get uh, much stronger than that. Uh, the uh, One of the largest ever recorded, <coughs> excuse me, was a... X4, X45, I should say. I was looking at some information here. Back in 2003, X40 plus, the exact number is X45. And that is also known as the uh, Halloween solar storms, the super storms there that created auroras all over the place there. Back in 2003, from a number of large events, including this X45 and, uh, of course, subsequent CMEs that were directed or directed uh, as you can see down the list here quite a bit happening there in the early 2000s x28 x24 uh, and of course ours right now right the, the most recent one in x 9.0 so pretty large but not as large as what we can see and of course we are entering into solar maximum here next year uh, about June 2025 is when we're supposed to peak in terms of solar maximum. So we still have a little ways to go before we reach the peak of uh, all this solar activity. So obviously uh, there is uh, potential now to see uh, some significant aurora events coming up over the next couple nights. Uh, tonight's forecast here, just real quick is uh, KP index up around a six. It could reach around a seven. So this forecast here just shows the G2 region. Um, and we're expecting a G3 class solar storm. So that would bring down the view line much further, uh, potentially down into Northern California over the next couple nights here. Notice KP index up around the seven between the 03 and 0600 time frame, uh, And then also again at 2100 to zero on that uh, UTC time. So tonight, tomorrow night, look uh, fairly spectacular in terms of aurora potential. Now this is the result of the X flare that we've seen a couple days ago. Still waiting on some information here on the latest very strong X flare, the X9.0. Uh, according to Kevin here on the solarham.com site, there was an earth directed CME. Uh, there's the outline of it, of course, uh, Got to wait for the uh, latest information here from the Space Weather Prediction Center on how thick or dense this plasma cloud is. That will determine how uh, sufficient the auroras will be uh, in the coming days once the arrival of the CME from this flare. Tonight and tomorrow is a result of the CME that was associated with this X flare here um, a couple days back. So watch for tonight. Things could be... Uh, quite active in terms of the aurora possibilities. So let's look at this solar flare here, or this uh, sunspot area. The uh, culprit of the most recent flare is gonna be AR3842. Of course, that is the same sunspot responsible for the 7.1 here a couple days ago. Here's uh, an image from last night. Uh, notice um, quite a bit of complexity here within that central core. I mentioned that last night. Uh, today, roughly about the same here. I'm not seeing any weakening structure within that sunspot. It's obviously currently looking directly at us. And there's a number of sunspots over here further to the west that are uh, fairly complex as well. So this whole regional area, got to watch here over the next couple days as it is in the Earth-directed view. If we get more large CMEs or more large flares with subsequent CMEs, we could be uh, really talking about some neat-looking auroras coming up over the next couple nights or so. Also a massive region here on the northeastern quadrant of the sun 
and it looks like maybe another area of development back further around the bend. But for right now, we got this uh, regional sunspot looking at us, a couple different groups here. But 3842 is the source of the X flares here recently. Uh, look at the UV filter flaring out here from this massive sunspot. Look at that. Looks like this one wants to produce a, uh, a massive flare. That's that uh, large sunspot area out here, 3848, which is now a little bit closer in the Earth directed view. Uh, currently flaring with what looks like to be <clears throat> some in flare activity, consistent in flare activity here. And I believe that's from that sunspot here that's uh, just consistently flaring right now. So we'll watch that. That's uh, somewhat pointing away from Earth, obviously. Um, but uh, it does look like it wants to produce a significant flare. We'll keep an eye on that for sure. All right, uh, so obviously an elevated flare threat, 35% chance for X flare, M flare at 75, and C flare around 99% chance or so. G3 storm, G2 storm, and I'm sure this will continue to enhance as we get further information on uh, the data from this most recent Solar flare in X 9.0, the strongest of this solar cycle. By the way, uh, the previous record holder was going to be this X 8.7 back in May. This was one of the sources that produced a numerous flares and Earth directed at the same time. There were subsequent CMEs uh, that produced the uh, May Aurora events all over the place. I'm sure you guys remember that, seeing the auroras down in the Southern California, Mexico, Florida. I finally got to see the auroras here in Northern California for the first time in my life ever. And uh, it was pretty cool. A whole bunch of uh, pink colored skies. You could actually see the, the curtains of the solar wind coming in, hitting the uh, areas way up above the surface there into the atmosphere. It's pretty neat looking. So whether we're going to see that again from the series of X flares, we'll have to wait and see what happens. It's all dependent also on... Uh, a number of factors, including the solar wind stream uh, data, which is a BZ component right here in the red. That's uh, right now fairly, let me see here, let me zoom in, look at the data. A little bit of up and down, <laughs> up and down here. It needs to be below this line, which is at zero. If we get this open here, if we get these dots, these, this data coming in and it stretches further south, then uh, that will allow the amplification for the auroras tonight. But right now, um, you know, we don't have any sign of, a, of that CME impact, which is expected a little bit later on this evening. But uh, we'll watch that. That could either suppress the auroras or allow for some awesome looking aurora borealis tonight and tomorrow. So we'll keep an eye on this data here. Uh, earthquake activity. Let's see what we got. Here's back out of that. That's from last night. Uh, so far today, let's see what we got for the largest earthquake activity. Looks like it's going to be this 5.4 out here across the Papua New Guinea region. Uh, Kermadec Trench getting in on a little bit of earthquake activity as well. So a little bit of movement adjustment going on down here. It's been somewhat active here across New Zealand re re recently. Uh, also, Alaska getting in on some earthquake activity with a 5.1 along the Aleutian Trench. Looks like a little bit a short time later at 4.5. So a little bit of subsequent movement going on here across this area of the subduction zone. We'll watch that. Uh, obviously, we've seen a whole lot of movement out here across the Pacific Plate here recently. So things could get a little bit more escalated. 4.6 here across the Mariana Trench. And let's see here. We got anything major going on in California yet? California is one of these areas that have been picking up a lot of earthquakes here recently and avoiding the big one for now. But uh, these patterns, this little wave pattern comes and goes. Uh, right now, it looks like we're at, uh, you know, most of this is from yesterday. Looks like we may be entering into a little quiet period right now which doesn't last long it seems like a couple days and we start getting elevated activity out here again uh, as far as any unusual movement today uh, let's see what we got here across the Los Angeles area a lot of this here from yesterday 
Uh, I guess the latest one here off the Huntington Beach area, 2.1. Off the uh, Rancho Palos Verdes area. Now, let me see here. I think that is going to be this area right here. There's been two earthquakes here, but it's off of the... Uh, off of the Cabrillo Fault, uh, but there is a little bit of activity stirring up out there just off this region in the last couple days. I know these guys have been dealing with some uh, landslides out there, losing uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, nice houses out there in that area. I was just down here a couple days ago checking it out, and beautiful, stunning views. I can understand why people want to build out here, but there's you know obviously some concern and an ongoing issue with uh, landslides out here with homes on it. So continue to watch that. A little bit of movement across the Los Angeles area eastward. Uh, just scattered. Nothing big. No cluster of earthquake activity yet. But uh, we'll continue to watch that. Around the Salton Sea. No swarm going on here. Pretty quiet. I think if we see... Well, I mean, it's... Any of these events out here could potentially trigger uh, the bigger, larger scale picture which is the San Andreas fault out here it's, it's possible uh, and of course with all the increasing movement we've seen here out in the last couple months we have seen um, well there's the likelihood increases out here of something much bigger happening but one thing I've noticed we haven't we haven't had any swarms down here across the Salton Sea area and I'm talking about down here across this little segment it'd be interesting to see if that picks up or not with all the elevated activity out here recently <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's see what else we have across the uh, the area. I'm moving up here across the Pacific Northwest or the uh, Cascadia area from yesterday. Four pointer, one earthquake right smack dab on the Cascadia fold and thrust belt out here. Goodness, 2.1. Nothing uh, new to report today. Yellowstone National Park, pretty quiet. The rest of the area. A lot of movement here from yesterday, a handful of earthquakes as well from today in the oil fields of Texas. Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a little bit of newer activity just after 1 o'clock my time here, local time in the morning, a.m. Uh, 5.0 stirring up out in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Nothing, uh, nothing major, right? These are just some five-pointers which uh, do happen out here on any given day. But we'll continue to keep an eye on things out here. It's definitely active. All right, uh, what else we have out here, folks? Um, anything major going on in the severe weather world? Not a whole lot. Just uh, some general thunderstorm activity out here across areas of the south and up around the uh, Midwest region. It looks like nothing major, though. No tornado, wind, hail, no severe weather threats. So let's check out the new model, the latest model, I should say, here across the area of the Gulf of Mexico. As uh, we're looking at a whole bunch of moisture down there with a really no, un or really no organized development in terms of tropical systems. But there is a lot of, uh, a lot of moisture. So Florida is going to get a bunch of rainfall as this system just sits around and uh, just continuously feed. Uh, up to the north here. It looks like a lot of rain expected there in Florida over the next week or so. Goodness, no major development, but that's still in a bad position there to provide uh, probably not needed rainfall across Florida. Let me see what we got here for the uh, accumulated precipitation. Oh, goodness. Yeah, these guys are going to get a bunch of rainfall coming up here, folks. As mo mostly the south half here of Florida, it looks like, just due to that tropical wave. Again, no sufficient development, but still, even just this type of pattern here can create havoc. And it looks like parts of Florida are in line to pick up over a foot of rainfall here. That's uh, pretty sufficient. So we'll continue to check back on that, but that's a um, pretty serious deal out there. Maybe even higher than a foot. That's a little scary. Uh, let's see what we got for California. Anything coming in for rainfall? Nope. 
high and dry, hot, it's supposed to be hundreds. Hundreds for the remainder of this week, hundreds for the weekend, hundreds for next week. Maybe a little cool down coming into California here, Northern California, late next week. We'll see what happens here, but I'm really not counting on it. It's been a, uh, a brutal, absolutely brutal summer out here for uh, Northern California. Uh, let's check Hawaii real quick. Forgot to check this. I don't see anything of abnormal activity out here. Just some deeper movement there. Pahala area. And a little bit of movement underneath Kilauea Volcano. That's fairly deep, though. Aside from that, folks, um, we will catch you back out here a little bit later. A little spike of an earthquake on Mount St. Helens. Nothing big. Aside from that, have a wonderful Thursday there, and we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening, unless something major happens. Have a good one.